There we go. So welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. Just a few of us here tonight kicking around. Um, and um, I have some weird desire. Um, I won't say who said it, but somebody said that uh, when she saw that I was dealing with elections and AI, she thought um, I needed some Xanax. But, <laughs> but the um, I, I, I think it's important to get this these conversations started soon. And they have roots. And one of the roots that Marina Lombardo and I were talking about is that she did letters to the next mayor, um, I don't know how long ago, quite a few years ago now, with like fourth graders. Yeah. And so just characterize the genre, because I think it's a fun place to start. What is What are letters to the next blank blank? Yeah. Well, first of all, that that idea was originally, I think, designed for middle school and high school, New York City students, um, Paul, from what I remember. Well, and nationally, I it was. They, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the, right. And, and then also the letters to the next mayor. Mm -hmm. But I remember that, and I, I believe it was actually the first time we met, you asked me if I thought fourth graders were capable of doing that type of work. And I said, yeah, they definitely are. Um, you know, maybe the their, the issues that <clears throat> are on their mind might be, you know, different than, you know, kids that are older than them. But um, I think what we started to do um, was really think about some, like, issues around New York City. I, I God, it was so long ago. I you know that we were reading about like some of the local rivers that were in, experiencing pollution issues. We were writing about the libraries and the possibilities the libraries were going to face budget cuts. Um, and different kids pick different topics. Um, we had two computers in the classroom. So there was uh, definitely a rotating schedule of when kids could research. I mean, this was like 2000, what? A while ago. Yeah. I don't know. 2000. 13, 12, 2013. I think I that's mean, right. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, so almost 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Whoa. <laughs> um, and the kids were really into it. It was actually after a New York State assessment, and they were, like, they they didn't, they were engaged. They were excited to do the work. Um, they were interested. And it was, like, a research-based, persuasive yeah, cool. Argument for them, you know, something they thought that whoever, you know, moved into the position should know about, be aware of, and know that young people cared about mm -hmm. what was going on. Christina, could I throw it to you and ask you to give us some historical context? <laughs> yeah, I'm actually yeah. looking up now. Am I unmuted? Because yeah. it started in 2008, right? Yeah, I mean, I so in 2008, the yeah. there was a project for letters to the next president that was a collaboration between the national writing project and google, google. Yeah. which was kind of fascinating and um using kind of google docs um and because it was an online forum it was primarily as you mentioned marina it was like 13 and up it was designed for um 13 and up and then um yeah we participated in that in my classes yeah, so that was 2008 election, which wow, it really was a long time ago. And then the second and, one, and, and Kristen, could I, one of the things I think we learned from and there, we learned a lot of stuff, and mm -hmm. there's been a lot of research and thinking about. It. But one of the things is that a lot of teachers who weren't into technology necessarily were able to kind of get into this project. Which I, I think that's one. Yeah, it was say, kind yeah. of an authentic purpose for doing it, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was an opportunity for people to, you know, identify issues and research and then write publicly, like write with the idea of publishing publicly. And all of that kind of required, you know, things like Google Docs and the internet and all of that. Yeah, and so, it was, wasn't widely adopted like it is now. And so I remember there was the there was almost the teaching of the idea of a template, like you could create a Oh, template. right, right, the um, template, yes, yeah. yes. Which yeah. then students could, you know, create templates, I think was kind of the, the thinking there, so, yeah. 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 So That's I'm cool. gonna, I, I'm gonna, I wrote down AI for an authentic purpose, <laughs> because my take is we're now mm -hmm. in AI, 
um, whether we, anyway, people are swimming around it or in it or whatever, right? But can we can we do a letters to the next president? And I, I have a, a thought about that title, which I will say in a second. But um, with AI, just the way technology had an authentic purpose, where AI has one, and I'm not sure what that is yet, but I think we ought to be able to, <laughs> right? So. Well, let me let me also say that the genre of letters over mm -hmm. time got morphed. In 2016, we also did letters to the next president. But by the time we hit 2020, we were working with KQED and we started focusing on let's talk about election 2020. So it was less about a letter to a candidate and more about, you know, issues that were of concern to you in the election in general. And was that kind of a flip grid kind of thing or? Uh, it, it, that was multiple was, tools. I think. It was multimedia. They had, it's part of their youth media challenge now. So I think they did have guidance for like digital stories or an audio story, Chris, which is kind of like, they still have, they still have a lot of robust tools around how to make digital and audio stories. And I mean, just to put it on the table, who's in office and who's getting reelected and who's not getting all of that ickiness um, yeah. has an impact on our enthusiasm and our idea that the students are writing for who, right? And and I I don't know if she has ever made this a public conversation, but I will write do it right now. Uh, I had a private conversation with Nicole Mira, who and she must have had this conversation with you too who question like letters to the next president as a kind of limiting format for civic involvement, right? Mm -hmm. Like, why did they have to write to the next president or the next mayor? Why couldn't they write to support um, a demonstrator or write to support somebody who's in trouble, who needs help? You know, so that right. so the opening, up, opening up the audience is, is also, you, you said opening up the media, that's absolutely but also open up to the audience is an interesting thought, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's that, true. You've heard that too? <laughs> well, when we say let's talk about tw election 2020, I think what gets lost there is that sense of audience, right? Uh -huh. Like specific audience. You can think more generally about audience and um, or your peers as audience or something like that. But, um, but yeah, that's interesting to think. Uh, about still about you know who are the variety of audiences that could be addressed right so i don't know how to title this but i i think the genre is interesting it's about it it, it also fits within civic um civically what was that CWAC. that CWAC. that whole thing yeah, yeah yeah um can somebody spell that out for me um, civically engaged writing analysis continuum yeah. So that public writing is is part yeah. of this also, and and so that's why I get excited about this. Let me bring, let me also mention, and um, I just listened to an A one podcast about bots in the election season, right? And it's scary um, in terms of what AI is going to do in terms of bots and so forth on social media. And even the thing that, Marina, you're right on top of it, but the chat 2024. Oh, I'm sorry. No, don't, don't be sorry. I just <laughs> identify, identify where it is. I do. I did. I, I mean, Kevin Hodgson um, put this up at, on the studio, and it is kind of mind blowing how they are very, very careful with how they, they cite um, what the candidates do say but they're they're bots they're not real people and you can go to them and you can talk to the candidates um do, have you played with it at all chris or marina no i have not i think no. i missed this on the all right do you want to do email. that i played that cornell west one was the only one i really looked at yeah it's, we could do that right is that okay sure I, I, um and look I'll, I'll pose the problem and then suggest a solution right away, right? Problem is these bots are going to, like, we don't even know what a bot is even, but 
how they're going to influence our thinking and this election season is really kind of mind blowing uh, in some ways. And what if, and we're sort of teaching our students how to make them. And so what's that about, right? And my first thought was, could they make a bot that would be the ideal candidate, right? Mm -hmm. So that they kind of, they make an, an artificial one. But of course, like by making something, you kind of realize what it is, and then maybe you become more aware of how that's affecting your media intake. I don't know. Any, yeah. Any, yeah. Is that fair? Well, it's it's interesting just thinking of my own students. Um, I think uh, if they created the ideal candidate, it would be interesting for them to pose like what policy initiatives, you know, because I have some kids who are pretty deep into talking about politics so that'd be kind of interesting like what would what would some policy you keep talking like? i'm just getting this ready yeah uh -huh. i mean what would some policy look like on the issues that they care about about you know this ideal candidate well and then there's sorry go ahead chris well then it would be that might give them some evidence to then approach real candidates with like here's what I care about and here's something that you might be able to do. I was looking at an initiative. I told Paul about this, but um, this initiative called Vote by Design that was started last right. election. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Chris, Chris and I worked with her a little yeah. bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Chris, you did more with her, I think, but yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But that was sort of focused on like an ideal candidate. But I'm trying to remember mm -hmm. what they did, you, you did from that. Like, what was the action? It or was the idea of building up, you know, like what you believe in before you pick the person right away. So it started with kind of, you know, what ideas do you want to see? What kind of temperament or whatever? And then I think it kind of built up to these are the people who are like that. Oh, that okay. Right? Yeah. Something like that. You know, when I, I'm, I'm going to keep blaming Nicole for this, but when I keep thinking of her, her urging, I, I, I want to call this thing letters from the next political leaders and resistors, right? And in the list, and in the list of people who they're writing to, I, I want, and or are saying are ideal, like maybe we can raise up resistors as well as somebody to look at and think about writing to and supporting, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah, I hope, I don't know. I don't know how that flies in different states, right? So uh, that's, Larry's the next president is like a, a whole national thing. So I don't, yeah. I mean, one thing I'm working on right now, again, also, so I'm sorry, I feel like I keep talking, but like America, oh. we're doing American Creed again. Oh, really? The American Creed Initiative. And, and this time it's young people who are sort of working on change in their communities and oh. kind of being inspired by their work and kind of doing your own writing and actually photography. So um, oh, I, it has- Yeah, I attended a, a, a kickoff thing of that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that's yeah. kind of underway. Huh. Like we have a draft of like very preliminary curriculum. We're getting some, and it, I mean, it's very, uh, we're doing a C3WP version of it. We're working on a journalistic version of some curriculum. So it's starting to come together but the reason I bring it up is because like what's been tricky about it is really thinking across, like it's, it's very committed to working across places and it's mm -hmm. very tricky to think about how do you talk about community and citizenship and care and power and democracy across political spectrum right now. Um, and how do you support that? So that's one of the places, one of the things that just, it makes it, it's a tricky project. It's an interesting project, but, um, but the idea is that kids can make, ultimately make photo essays 
or photo stories, or even simply like do photography and captioning. Um, so it's kind of a range of outcomes. Mm -hmm. So we will have a youth publishing forum and that'll be in 2026. But anyway, just thinking then that way too, about like who are the okay. leaders in your community, I think is kind of interesting. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. I, what's also interesting kind of from a meta point of view is, is how all these various groups can figure out how to collaborate together and, right? So, yeah, and various initiatives. Mm -hmm. and who knows? <laughs> but uh, we can figure that out. All right, so let's look at that. I do, Chris, I do, I, I asked you to key that stuff up. I do want to, I personally want to check in with you and I think, Christina and Marina yeah. will find it interesting. Um, yeah. Let's look at let's look at one of these candidates though. We're going to sure. browse. Um, so I went to browse. You could click on the the link on the table there and find this as well. And I'm gonna, if you don't mind, I'm gonna stick with so I don't have to um, <laughs> take drugs. To, no, I I'm gonna stick with um, Cornell West, brother West here. And I ask, so you go in, here's, I probably should take this off, but it doesn't matter. I asked him one question and that kind of sticks here, but what you do is you ask a question. Somebody want to pose another question for Cornell West about his policies or ideas or thinking or what's going on in the world? Medicare for all. How's he plan to support Oh, how? Yeah. Yeah. Sort of like, how does he? How does he plan to support conversations across political divides in order oh. to? Yeah, hard question. Sorry. <laughs> I, I I'm assuming he believes in Medicare for all. I guess yes, I'm you are assuming assumption. Conversations across. Okay, um, and I've got to move something away here. Okay, so then you hit this, right? And what it's doing right now is it's using the AI to go out and gather thoughts, but you'll and it and it creates it creates his answer. Um, you'll notice there are footnotes for, um, and you can check the sources. Um, this one doesn't have a a voice play. This one had a voice play. Maybe it will. Oh, it does. Um, but I don't think you can hear it. I tested it just before we came on. Um, but so, somebody want to go ahead, Chris, you can read this. <laughs> um, and is that supposed to be his voice? It is. Go ahead. You can do it. Uh, here, let's see if it plays, but I don't think you'll hear it. Can you hear that? No. Uh, I can't hear. Paul, you muted yourself. Oh, okay. Okay, am I back? Sound? Hello, hello? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. I couldn't Chris. hear anything there. Chris, could you read? Um, I'm going to put it back. There we go. Oh, there we go. Sure. Thanks. Okay. Uh, my dear fellow traveler in the quest for justice, the challenge of nurturing dialogue across the vast political divides is a profound one indeed. To support Medicare for all, we must engage in a kind of jazz-like interplay where <laughs> every voice is respected, every concern is heard, and the collective improvisation moves us toward a melody of health justice for all. It's about recognizing that our fates are inextricably linked and that the health of my sister in the hollows of Appalachia my brother in the streets of South Central Los Angeles and every child in between is bound up with our own. We must articulate the moral and economic urgency of Medicare for all, illuminating how a system that leaves millions without coverage is not only a betrayal of our ethical duties, but also a costly inefficiency in our nation's budget. 
we must show how the commodification of health care is a form of violence against the most vulnerable among us and call out the corporate greed that profits from this suffering. In this endeavor, we shall not demonize those who disagree, but invite them into a space of mutual respect and understanding where we can explore the empirical realities that other nations spend far less on health care with better outcomes and that the administrative overhead of our current system drains resources that could be directed to saving lives. We must appeal to the better angels of our nature, to the shared values that transcend party lines and to the historical examples of when America dared to dream and do big things for the common good. We will also need to be strategic to build coalitions that can apply pressure where it is most effective and to be willing to speak truth to power, even if it means challenging the status quo within our own ranks. We must be the change we wish to see, and that means embodying the principles of love and justice in our every action, our every word in the pursuit of health care for all. What? Oops, there is one. Are, yeah, yeah. So this is the invitation to conversation. What are some of the key challenges you've encountered when trying to have some conversations about Medicare for all across political divides? Oh, um, that's interesting. They give suggested yeah. questions. Yeah. Whatever. Um, and I just want to check. This is what it looks like when you go to the source, right? You could you could dig down and find the interview and listen to the interview if you wanted. Hmm. Yeah, so that's where you know a lot of the knock against Chat GPT is that it's making up sources. So this is like pulling from a body of sources. Well, yeah, it somehow sources something. I'm not sure how it does that, but yeah. Hmm. I mean, uh, yeah. It's online, right? This is online. This is. Um, yep. Yeah, um, that's interesting. I don't know how to go back. So, it would be fair to say that not uh, uh, all bots are not bad, right? And maybe this is a good use of bots. I don't know. Hmm. But I think it's at least I. I do think that as we. And, and if you have a better name for bots, please offer it. I don't know. But becoming like becoming critical media users, becoming critical bot users and makers, I think is a valid part of what our curriculum could, you know, promote. Does that, does that sound mm -hmm. crazy or no? Yeah, okay. I I raised this at the at the Media Literacy Alliance the other day, uh -huh. just because, you know, in media literacy work, they're often talking about like analyze, then da, 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 you know, like creates kind of at the end after you do all this other stuff. Right. And, and there's a process here that sort of like create and analyze and question, you know, it's like you're kind of doing it all together instead of. Yeah, it might be worth pulling it apart. That's, that's a good thought, actually. But yeah. There's in this case we're reading a bot, right? And what does that what so really valid question? I don't have an answer. Is this more fun? Is it better? Does it get the information easier to kids than actually watching the videos and reading the the text behind it or not? Well, there's the idea of citing sources is kind of interesting because I don't have to read linearly, linearly, you know, I still can go and then pop out and watch a video and come back. So that seems, uh -huh. you know, and engaging for the students I'm thinking of. And that these stick on your screen, you can come back to it next week is useful too, right? Mm-hmm. I think you can have them argue with each other, too. Hmm. All right. Shall we end our inquiry with this and just say, let's, if you get a chance, go look at it and see. I mean, I haven't gone much further than this myself. But. Pretty interesting stuff, yeah. I have to say, my I do have some ones that are pretty passionate. Like, my editor-in-chief is pretty passionate about politics, and he, and locally, too. Like, he interviewed the candidates for our mayor, and um you know so he he wants to do more political writing and we have been exploring a little thinking about a little ai as well so this will be i think i've got some kids who are interested for sure in playing with that so 
I'll end this by pointing to on, on the table also is Cornell West, his bumper sticker. If you click on that, you'll see a uh, now comment version. So I just, I took an interview with Cornell West that he did. And I said, be a, you know, it's a simulator. I said, be Brother West, be Brother West simulator. And then, you, so you can go into now comment and ask him questions, right? Kind of similar to what they're doing, but it only cites the one source at this point. So does that make sense what that is? It only cites the one source. It only cites the source you trained it on. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That. Um. And not to correct you, but it's just. Um. It's it's worth understanding. They. It's called a reference text. Like so, you put a reference text right in the um, right in the prompt. Okay. Yeah. yeah training is fine, but I just wanted to be clear with it. So, Chris. That's a bit of an introduction. You're playing with simulators. Mm, mm -hmm. Show us what so, you're doing for the next 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> bit of a shifting of gears here. Um, so um, this is definitely geared toward a very specific moment, specific class. And I'm talking about AP English language and composition. And you have to do rhetorical analysis in AP English language and composition. That's a course I teach. And so I want students to, you know, do well on that test so they can get college credit and all that. And so, um, yeah, so I created a prompt that would help them with one of those essays. So I guess I could show that. Um, it is yeah. actually a very important essay for them to write, right? <laughs> For yeah, yeah. It's, for, for many students, it's important. It's important. They write three essays, multiple choice section, and then they write three essays. And this is one of the three tasks they have to do. So let me, I'm just a little sheepish about it because this example is kind of geeky compared to like the election and everything. But here goes nothing. <laughs> uh, okay. There we go, perhaps. Not share. Yeah, there you go. There you Perfect. go. Yeah. Okay. Oops. I, am I sharing my whole screen? Like no, if I good. do, if I do this, can you see it? I mean, uh, are you seeing a? We're sitting in partners' discussions. No. Oh, okay. I gotta share my whole screen. Sorry. Oh, how do I get the chat window? Oh, never mind. You found it. Yeah. To make it close, you have to click on the chat button again. Share my screen next. And then, oh, oh, right, right. Window is what I want to choose. Okay, got it. I'm up to speed now. Okay, so um, <clears throat> that's the, the an essay prompt that students had to write an essay to. This is a former AP English language question number two. It's rhetorical analysis. And it's a speech by Sonia Sotomayor. And, and so... Uh, the prompt is, you know, part of New York. Speech. Go for it. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. What's that? It's a political speech. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Born in New York City to Puerto Rican parents, Sonia Sotomayor was appointed a United States Supreme Court justice in 2009, becoming the first Latina justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. She delivered the speech, A Latina Judge's Voice, at the University of California Berkeley School of Law in 2001 when she was an appeals court judge. Following passage is an excerpt from that speech. Read this passage carefully. Write an essay that analyzes the rhetorical choices Sotomayor makes to convey her message about her identity. And you know the the students should be doing that bulleted list there. They're like, by the way, you should respond to the prompt with a thesis that analyzes the writer's rhetorical choices, and you should select evidence uh, to support your line of reasoning. So there's like little things like, hey, you should do this stuff in this essay. So. After so this was a former uh, essay, like it was you know like thousands of students wrote an essay in response to this, and um, and then there's a thing called the chief readers notes that are released. So you know like a bunch of teachers get together. I've never had the joy of doing that particular task, but a bunch of teachers get together in the summer and read thousands of high school essays like on this thing here. And then the chief reader issues a report like, hey, here's what we noticed. This is 
you know, what people did well and here's something that people did uh, could improve on that kind of thing. So I was like, okay, I'll take the chief reader's notes. And so the audience was for teachers, but I want to be like, okay, it seems like the chief reader is pretty knowledgeable. And if my students knew what the chief reader knew or the chief reader became their tutor, so to speak, cool. Um, that seems like that would be good feedback for students for their um, essay. And so I got the, I edited the chief reader's notes a little bit because the audience isn't teachers, the audience is my students. So basically I was just like, hey, um, here's all the prompt, the prompt queued up or not? Can you show it? I do, yeah. So okay. this is my prompt here. So I just said, be a teacher of an AP English language composition course. Give helpful feedback to students about a rhetorical analysis essay. And then I said, here's a question. And then I said, here begins the excerpt of a speech by Sonia Sotomayor. <clears throat> and then after that, I think, you know, we looked at that thing on how to put some yeah. symbols in. So a delimiter. So there's the end of the speech. And then I just said, hey, you know, you're very knowledgeable about the advanced placement English language and composition course. And you've just written a report summarizing your findings. Below are your thoughts after reading a large number of students' responses um, to an essay prompt, blah, blah, blah. Um, Right. So like, it's just like, now, can you give feedback to people based on all this stuff, you know? So this and, is then, a, and this is an interview that he that the Yeah, teacher, but I changed it from an interview to just like, these are your thoughts. Okay, got it. Responder, mm -hmm. these are your thoughts. And so like, all this stuff that follows is me editing the chief readers notes on what the, the chief reader thought was, um, you know, like, helpful feedback for teachers and then so i changed it a little bit to say like and here's some advice i would give to the student writers so that question was like what advice would you give to teachers and i just said well mm -hmm. i became the chief reader who's gonna you know i should have said here's the end of the report but i think the bot kind of understood and then um then there's just like a little bit more like hey you know respond to these students and, and finally, you know, at the end, like Paul, you've suggested we do is like at the end of your comment in a separate paragraph, say exactly this. Please note everything in this comment is AI generated. It's made up to sound like your helpful AP English teacher in room 126. So, so, you know, that's me. And, and that's so. That's a pretty complex document, by the way. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's a bit, it's a work in progress. So, um, so then. How many, times, well, by that, how many times do you think you iterated on it? Um, well, at first it was the chief reader report that I just put in and said, be the chief reader. And then the chief reader was giving advice to a teacher at the same time as like feedback. So I definitely iterated to be like, no, 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 you're actually giving feedback. So those were, there's a lot of iterations between, I mean, you know, the, yeah, yeah. Okay. The version history, as you can imagine, is probably a lot. Oh, you do have version history. Cool. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, trust me, there, there's numerous iterations of this thing because it, um, you know, December 14th and then again on the 7th. Um, oh, you know, oh. Yeah. So anyway. It's good, it's good you have so, that. Okay. So I gave, a, I have two sections and I, one class wrote this essay on Sotomayor and then the other class wrote a, an essay on a speech by Rita Dove. So I trained this bot uh over christmas vacation on the essays that half of the class wrote and then when the students came back the other class wrote this essay which had already been kind of you know working with these other student essays so it had kind of i think like a body of text that it had been responding to um and then so this time first time i actually gave them the feedback on their semester exams. When they came back first day back from Christmas vacation, I'm like, hey, here's some feedback okay. for you. Can you show that? Because, or are you? Um, yeah, I mean, I'll show it um, in a little bit because I'm gonna show oh. okay. them the So I'll show some of that feedback. But then when they came back, I had them write this essay, let's say, because they this class would have written the Rita Dove essay. So they wrote this essay 
And then I said, okay. And they wrote it on paper too, because I don't want them just, you can just copy these things online. So they wrote it on paper and then they had to transcribe it into a Google doc. And then uh, they went to now comment and got feedback from the bot. So these are my instructions to them. Uh, they got a Google doc that said, put your draft here. So first write a draft. And then I said, step two, upload your document to now comment and, you know, engage with AI. And I said, look for this AI simulator. It was the AP Lang uh, Sotomayor. So it's called AP Lang. FRQ is a free response question. Um, so it's feedback to it. So they chose that bot. And then I suggested that they ask these questions, which were based on, uh, you know, the, 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 the let's some, yeah, remember when I showed you the essay, questions so. from the assignment. Yeah. So it yeah. said like, you should have a thesis and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, so then they asked the bot those questions and one then, at a time or all together. Uh, one at a time. And okay. some of them just asked like one question, just did this and was like, I'm, I'm done. I've gotten up. Uh, because it does give a lot. Like one of the first comments from a pretty savvy kid I got was like, this is a lot. You know, as a matter of fact, this is too much feedback. So, yeah. um, and then I said, revise your essay based on at least one piece of feedback you got. So this student, her feedback looked like this. She just asked the one question. Um, and I guess, I don't even know if she asked a question. But anyway, the bot gave her some feedback. And then what she did was highlighted a couple of areas um, that she was going to incorporate into her essay. So she wrote a draft, she asked the bot to give her some feedback, and then we she used- We look at the it. feedback again, it went fast. This yeah. is it here. Oh. That's okay. the feedback oh, I, the bot I see it. gave. I see it now, so okay. It says, okay. your thesis does a commendable job of setting the stage for your rhetorical analysis. But it also gave her some things to work on. And you can see she highlighted some things. It said, to further strengthen your essay, consider explicitly linking those rhetorical choices to her broader message and identifying the anticipated impact on her audience, law students and the future influences, influencers in this context. So then you can see she actually tried to do that. So there's a part here where she added something it looks like and then there's a part down here that she also tried to be a little bit more specific about the rhetorical choices so this was one class period where um you know they transcribed their essay they got some feedback from the bot and then they um were the goal was to incorporate it into an essay and then I did ask them about the helpfulness of the feedback. So I um, asked them some questions. Basically, I just said, you know, it's a Likert scale. On, on the scale of one to seven, would you say the feedback was helpful? Like, I agree or I disagree. And so, um, I mean, only 11 of them filled this out. But, um, you know, what you see is that- Not a bad number. You know, so um, it's skewing to the left of helpfulness. It looks like uh, I asked him about each of those bullet points that remember those questions that. Um, mm -hmm. And this one is, you know, it's bell shaped, but it still skews left. So for what it's worth, it looks like it's you could say it's generally helpful, I would say. Um, for well at least you know the majority of them found it helpful it looks like and um they if you look at some of their comments um it gave great feedback on the ways i identified sotomayor using rhetoric so that's one the bot sometimes says like here's what you did well um somebody is saying like i don't really know rhetorical stuff that well um, but that seems useful um Sometimes it didn't make sense to this student. Uh, the AI helped me grasp a deeper understanding of the rhetorical choices that I saw and helped me go into more detail about them. So here's somebody, honestly, I felt pretty good about my explanations for the most part. Of course, I wish I had more time so I could have filled in more of why I picked the device I did. 
Um, yeah. So, yeah. Cool. Amazingly methodical. You already have your PhD, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like a it's like a PhD little thing here. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so like you spent a lot of time on this, and there's like the prompt. I, it's really interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's tons of work, but when I think about it, when I have to analyze 50 essays and I think about my life where mm -hmm. like, I'm not going to sit down and do 50 essays at the same time. So yeah. like, I'll do some and then you get called away. And then there's the startup time. It's like, crap, where was I again? Like, what was this stuff? And then sometimes it's like, I am not happy doing this stuff right now. I got to go walk away. So that does that color some of the feedback I give? Um, yeah. Sometimes it's like, well, I know what this kid meant. So, you know, so for what it's worth, in the end, it probably still was more time consuming, but this is the kind of thing that I might teach again. So in that respect, yeah, you could use it again. Yeah. Right? And it's very specific to that particular essay, but um, it did give them really specific feedback. And I do think they improved their essays. I haven't really looked carefully, but from what I can see, it looks like they they took some of that feedback to heart, at least one piece of feedback to make it better. Um, yeah. It's hmm, cool. <laughs> there you have it. Have any of them, I'm just thinking that one of the things the eighth graders are doing in New Jersey is, um, is creating um, scoring guides for themselves. <laughs> yeah, I experimented with that and it was, I, I do have the rubric and everything, but it wasn't applying it very well because it was scoring them really low. And these things are just as good as the sample essays I looked at. So, you know, I'm working on that. Um, they already do a lot of playing around with AI themselves, image that, generation. That's really where, where it's going to go. Where, how they play around where, how? You know, image generation stuff for fun. Mm -hmm. They're like, look at what I just did. Uh, uh, uh. Um, and, you know, we talked about how they use AI. It's, um, you know, there's some pretty savvy uses, like you'd guess, like homework help, uh, help me create an outline, um, stuff like that. Yeah. But have, have, they, have they been interested to create thinking partners at all? Or um, That's where we're headed. Um, you know, the next thing I do is like they're going to look at like a political issue for the next number of weeks. And um, so I, yeah, I'm still working on that, but they should yeah, be I'm able to curious, create yeah. something to give them feedback on their thinking. Mm -hmm. cool. I was thinking about how just the politics of, like the power okay. dynamic, again, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, but the power dynamic of the chief, whoever that is. Mm -hmm. Chief reader, yeah. Chief reader. And how the chief reader is, you know, just sort of like traditionally communicating through the teacher, not communicating to the students. And you've mm -hmm. actually changed the power dynamic here in that you're, you, you're like, no, the students should see what the chief reader thinks. Yeah, right? I mean... I, I had originally, when I first saw it, you know, I'm a little bit more um, motivated to be thinking about this stuff than my students are. But originally, when I saw the chief reader's report, I'm like, man, I wish my students knew all this stuff. Yeah. Well, they're not gonna they're not gonna read that chief reader report um, with much relish. <laughs> Let's put it that way, or just leave it at they're not gonna read that report. And mm -hmm. and so this way, at least, it's kind of getting some of that message to them about their writing. And if you think about like, okay, feedback, what we know about feedback is if it's immediate, it's effective. Mm -hmm. And I can never be immediate with this particular task. There's no way, like, I'm not going to do this in a weekend. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sure there are dedicated folks who go home that night and do it and get it right back to people. I'm not one of those. And so it's like two weeks before I get a stack of essays back to people. Yeah. This is pretty immediate feedback. And it's, pretty good you know mm -hmm. so do you think the students will be able to write more than because of that yeah that's one of, yeah write write more 
do yeah more. i mean like like right take yeah um i don't mean longer i mean like they'll attack the assignment twice as opposed to once or three times during the semester yeah because, because they can get the feedback right away they can say oh let me go try it again correct on yeah a different now way. i have to generalize this feedback mm -hmm. you know because they're they're gonna write about a different essay but i think I think they can go back to a bot that can give them feedback on rhetorical analysis. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that some of them, you know, the ones who are really, you who care will find it pretty helpful. I mean, they are seniors and they are, yep, yep. they're, they're, you know, they're seniors and they're great, but some of them care a little, are a little more invested than others. Um, I, I'm looking at the clock, but I could do a very quick update on Rohan. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. um, blah, 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 present. You did screen. He's one of the eighth graders. Yeah, and I, mm -hmm. it's only his. He was here last. I think he he was actually in the nine o'clock hour too, but he was he didn't say anything. But I, I think I can quickly scroll through here. It's all sort of so his yeah. There's no last name. So I'll show you, won't, we won't be able to read it, but he, sorry, where do I want to start? So this is what he's writing about. He's writing about endless war in the United States, right? Mm -hmm. And his, he tries to, he was, and the assignment is to write about something you're really interested in, passionate about kind of thing. Um, there's another name for it uses but um joe sedronsky is the teacher um he then used a couple of existing um mentors to give him feedback and yeah so paul i was here and yeah, one yeah. of the things that i thought was interesting that he said that my the student who said right away Good. first was he looked at the feedback because i showed him some of the stuff back then and he said oh that's too long yeah, yeah, and and that was like one of my students' first things, and that's his thinking here was like he wanted to get it. That's where this next one that, I th as I recall, yeah, this, that bullet. This is the first one he made out of yeah. out of out of green. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give me the simple advice, and he also doesn't want any of the positive stuff. He just tell me what to do. <laughs> just interesting, right? So, and I, there there's a variation on the bullet advice. I'm not sure why. But then actually the one he liked the best, I think, was this one where he asked it to give what's the inner voice of this. And it gives him three sort of categories that he's thinking about in his writing. And then in a conversation with him, he said that somebody said that he needs to fact check his stuff. I was interested in fact checking. So I used a reference article. I used the um, Congressional Research CIS report on US wars. And so that's in the prompt, and you say, "Hey, check this this uh, student's work against this document, right?" And again, he said, "All I need is this stuff that says I'm not accurate, and I'll go research that stuff." Right? So he didn't get overwhelmed by it. I thought he might. Mm. Um, I, I don't know. He did this one. Rohan's evidence. Yeah. Not sure what that one's about. But then, yeah, he's playing with fact checkers. I'm just, we're going fast here. But yeah, and then he started grading himself, right? <laughs> so, and so, but you you got to see behind here, he's, he has to put in what these, what these four categories are, right? And I have to ask him what he came up with there. And then here's his revision. And he, all right, that we could study that more. Oh, he used the uh, research service to fact check that again. That's nice that he, yeah. I mean, the balance between using what somebody gives you and making it up yourself is what I'm interested mm -hmm. in. He did an update to, he, he revised again. He looked, he went back to his inner voice. <laughs> They really need him to be annotating this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. so he used his simple advice again. He revised again. He used 
It's a fact, his own fact checker. Wow. <laughs> so interesting what he's doing. Yeah. I think. Final update. Final update, yeah. With an E. <laughs> so now, final. Update. now what's his grade? <laughs> yeah. Overall rock and job. <laughs> And somehow it's on a uh, hundred point score now. <laughs> he has it divided by four, but <laughs> whatever. And fascinating process, it seems to me. Yeah. That he's doing and 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 really pretty self directed, right? I mean, that's what's that's what I want to kind of be paying attention to is. And I'm worried that you know the Rowans of the world get self directed and totally geek out on this. And what happens to the other eighty percent? Right. But, yeah. But I, I, I mean, there's a lot to like about that. But the idea of the authoritative document and fact check my work on that is pretty intriguing. Mm -hmm. It also was making me think about, um, like, in one of your sessions, Paul, they were thinking about like make cycles with this stuff. Uh -huh. And I do wonder if there's a way, like with my multimodal class, I have a make cycle where like I try to encourage people to document and to reflect, like do a maker log as they're going. It comes from CL MOOC, but like, like there's, there's questions to ask along the way as you're going, you know, it doesn't, I mean, not everybody does it as thoroughly or whatever, but like, is there yeah, some kind of- well at any point he could hit, he could just hit reply and like his reflective moment could, could be there, but, yeah. it, but it's unclear. He just, you know, it's natural. We just want to keep going and do the work. We just keep right? going. But, yeah. Yeah. We're not, and it's, we're not and it's still the, the bell rings and yeah. Right. But yeah, I mean, well, I think both guys last week said that if they had time, they would go back and do some of that replying. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, at any rate, that's sort of the, what we're up to. Marina, we, mm -hmm. we elbowed you out. You okay? Or are you up here? Or? What do you mean? I'm listening. I I've been listening. I just, I, I just want to invite you back in if you'd like to say anything. Yeah. I don't know. I was like playing around with the chat 2024. What'd you for learn? A little bit. Well, I, I was wondering, like, you know, what type of interaction, like, you know, I mean, I teach younger students. So I was like, yeah. um, asking things like, I'm 10, I'm 10 years old, explain the question, explain the answer. So that I can wow. understand did it, it. Did it do it? Yeah, but it wasn't consistent. So like, after mm -hmm. I, you know, I was writing stuff like, uh, what are you what are you gonna do about pollution in the ocean? You know, stuff that kids might say, you know? Yeah. And then I got like a pretty like, you know, technical-ish answer long. So I said, you know, can you I'm 10 years old. Can you explain it to me like I'm 10? And um he did make like, you know, um a metaphor, like like a almost like a me a messy room. Imagine a messy room and like da -da -da. Uh, but then I asked a follow-up question about like endangered animals, and then it went right back to um, saying a little bit more sophisticated in a more sophisticated way. So I was kind of playing around with it like that. So each time you ask it, you would have to remind it that you're ten. Yeah. 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 I guess that's kind of what I was. Yeah. But, yeah. Cool. cool. This one. I was, uh, somebody. So I was asked if some of this work can go below sixth grade. And I thought of you and I, my answer, I'm checking my answer, was um, what I see elementary, uh, younger elementary teachers doing is using AI in different ways and then bringing it to the students and then having them ask questions and you go back to the AI. It's like you're an intermediary, is that generally true? I, yeah, I, I would say that that's definitely my role right now. Mm -hmm. um but you use it plenty, but right? they do yeah. have access to like on padlet we have we have access for padlet mm -hmm. and padlet has um generative art within it too so mm -hmm. they have 
um, used their own writing. They've they've taken the steps to use their writing and done do some um, art generation in that way. Um, cool. Other times, um, we you know I've taken. I don't know if you guys saw the whole like um, Lego prompt that was go going around, like you know, on Twitter and stuff. So like I had my students write. Um, personal descriptions of themselves and then we turn them into Legos, but I did that on Dolly. So like they wrote up the template. I, um, I, I put it in and then I, um, I screenshotted the pic, I screenshot the pictures, put it back on their document and then they had to analyze if it matched what they wrote, if they wanted to change it. And then we did, then I did it in front of them for the second round. And then they were helping one another to be more specific, more discreet. So if, that's, that's how I've been kind great. of using it. I'd like to see this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Can you show them fast? Yeah, hold on. Let me let me just pull it up. I have Sorry to... if I'm keeping you all over. No. <laughs> let me just get it for you. I just like as a media literacy piece again, just where we started. That feels like a like a strong way to work with kids, especially because it's like a, a a meme right now too. Well, look. I'm sorry. I feel like it takes me have, take me forever okay. to get there, but I'm getting there. Have, and they're also going to have access to Canva because Canva signed our school. Um, privacy agreement. So that's another mm -hmm. avenue that our and that actually does have text generation and I think too. So, mm -hmm. um, so you know, we are Microsoft. It's going to creep. It's going to creep in everywhere. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, and you know, I'm I'm you know I work with you know like I said my friend Alana, and she's really been at the forefront of <clears throat> this type of work. Um. We're a Microsoft district, so as teachers, we have access to Bing Chat, but it's um, blocked out for the kids right now. Um, okay, hold on. But that wouldn't matter for the way you use AI anyhow, because you are the intermediary. So maybe it's maybe it's appropriate that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what was fun. <laughs> Wait. So what is this? This is. So this, yeah, this was like a couple of weeks ago. Special edition Legos. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, and it was actually really being um, pushed around as a Microsoft designer prompt, but I took the prompt and I used it in in Dolly, which is in in the Bing in Bing Chat. But um, I did mine first, and like they they absolutely loved which it. Which one is you? Mine's not up here. I I oh, didn't okay. put it up there, um, but. Yeah, they, you know, so, you know, there's, there's a bunch of different skills. There's not the writing, but then there's some tech skills. Like, you know, they had, like I said, they had to screenshot and. Um, so can I ask about like the top one in the middle there was the prompt something like, I, I really like snowboarding and I have two siblings or. She, no, um, this particular student did, did say, um, the shirt should say that, um, I, like Mount Snow. So that one actually came out pretty good. Um, this kid did write, I am wearing a snake t-shirt. <laughs> um, and it's funny because they, a lot of them are really are, um, this kid over here and, and this, the, the shot that they took was not great. So, you know, some tech skills to work on, but they said wearing a t-shirt that's like Mary, uh, Rex Smith, like, T-Rex, right? So, um, this thing. So they were thinking about like the clothing that they were wearing on that particular day. One thing we, and then we did a couple of them I'm trying to think which ones we went through. This kid loves Rubik's cubes. Oh my gosh. And he was like really like bent out of shape because it's not, do you see? It's like, it's not it's, a real it's cube. Not, it's real, not, yeah. It's, it's not, not even the right cubes. numbers. Yeah. So, you know, that's like stuff that like little, like the little ones definitely get a little hung up on. <laughs> um, and I saw that when we were using um, Padlet to do some like, they they wrote personal narratives and they they hand wrote them and did illustration cover. And then we also did eBooks to kind of like discuss the idea that authors publish 
in very variety of different published their texts in a variety of different ways. So they used Book Creator to do that. But um, one of them wrote about going on a roller coaster at, I guess, Harry Potter World or whatever. And she was just like so devastated that it didn't look like Hagrid. And it would, and I was like, you know, but but look at the castle. You know, you have to like, you know, no, it's not, it's not going to be perfect. And what elements is it highlighting that like really match your story? Hmm. So stuff like that. Okay. Thank you for sharing. That, yeah. That was delightful. I know it's just like a little like a, it's a little something, but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna swing around and ask you uh, to to the beginning. Um like I asked you 15 years ago, can third graders do some sort of political letter to the next something for in some way? I think they can. I mean, last year I had my third graders do TED Talks, you know, um, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, up on the stage. Like, you know, I, I, um, and, you know, and, I you did, all, and you I did, did that, you did that whole inquiry about the Hudson River, right? As well. Yes, we did with the solutionary thinking um, framework. Yeah. They, yeah. I think that they are. So really, how is this any different than that? I, it's I not, think it it's, is. But. It's not. As long as it's a project that excites kids and they they feel empowered and engaged in it, I, I think you can get them to do a lot of, it's not even about getting them there. You don't have it's to. something about sharing with other, sharing with other people too, though. Yeah. Like you're, yeah. Which adds, adds a certain element of it, but. Fair enough. Cool. All right. We'll keep your third graders in the mix. <laughs> I'm just thinking like in terms of Nicole's prompt, like who, mm -hmm. who would you write to, you know, I don't know. It's just, I think in my community, who would I write to? Mm. Well, I mean, she started to suggest things like you could write to a refugee, right? And what they need, you know, in, right? Or, you know, so, so you, you, or you could write to a resistor and say what they should do. You could write to, you could write to Extinction, whatever that group is, right? And suggest mm -hmm. the next demonstration they should do. Right. Or you could write to like, you know, let's say water rights are a big deal out west and, and you know, ranchers growing alfalfa mm -hmm. are kind of under fire right now. But I could write to a rancher and say, like, what ideas do you have? Mm -hmm. I could write to people on the opposite side and and to help me, you know, kind of devil's advocate kind of thing. Right. Right. Or like on gun issues, like. Mm -hmm. with, mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. I do think that. that choosing your audience is part of the you know part of we want them to learn so yeah and you know i still think it's within the same domain of letters to the next president but yeah i'm interested to play with that a little bit mm -hmm. this time especially since you know <laughs> especially since of the gallery that is you know that's there for them to write to otherwise Mm. The gallery characters, yeah, I know yes. that's that's what's a little disturbing. Yeah, so that's one of the motivations for shifting it. Just damn it! Thank you all. I want to. There's a lot of them too. I don't know half these people. I know. <laughs> I don't think I want to either. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. All right. Have a good night. Thank you so much sharing. That was awesome. Okay. Bye. Bye.